where the Indian Ocean collides with the southern cliffs of Africa, Cape fur seals bring defenseless young into the world. A challenging world, where a pup's journey to adulthood is under constant threat. A dangerous voyage of a seal led astray by one of nature's most mysterious migrations. Followed by hundreds of hunters, hungry for one of the ocean's most awesome events. The Feast of Predators. Winter on the untamed shores of the wild coast. Here, the calm ocean surface conceals the turmoil stirring in the currents below. Millions upon millions of tiny fish swimming for their lives. A formidable migration called the sardine run. A ten-year-old bull seal plunders the shoals. But he's not alone. He is a rogue in the midst of an army of predators. This is their annual feast. A feeding frenzy of immense proportions. The attack is relentless, and now the sharks join in. Birds plunder from the air. Eventually, the feast comes to an end. For the bull seal, this was a royal banquet. He watches the rest of the sardines swim away. It's now the end of winter, and the shoals disappear into the ocean depths. Their destination? one of the most puzzling unsolved mysteries of nature. With nothing left to hunt, the predators leave the wild coast. The bull is a thousand kilometers from home, and so are the gannets. They begin their return trip to their summer breeding colonies in the Cape, not many seals ever embark on such a long journey. His return home will be a three-month-long test of endurance. The predators follow Africa's southern shoreline from the subtropical wild coast all the way to the continent's most southern extremity, the Cape. Here, the coast is cooled by the currents and warmed by the African sun, an ideal habitat for birds and mammals that breed on land and feed on the bounty of the sea. The bull's home colony occupies a rocky island off the southern tip of Africa. 500 meters from its shores, he enters the kelp forest. It's November, the beginning of summer, and he joins other bulls returning to mate. But to reach land, they must run a dangerous gauntlet. 
The half kilometer wide corridor between kelp forest and the island harbors the most lethal of seal hunters, the great white shark, a calculating predator who's perfected the skills of surprise, ambush, and attack. To get past the enemy, the seals gather in groups and make a sprint for land. The combination of speed and porpoising maneuvers should confuse the attacker. Every run of the gauntlet could be a seal's last swim. Survival depends on the luck of the draw. This time, the big bull escapes the jaws of death and reaches the shallows. He's safely home. Now, he needs to stake out a territory. He has the advantage of being the largest bull around, and in a seal colony, size certainly matters. No one dares get in his way. Confidently, he returns to the same territory he held the year before. Twenty-five square meters occupied by fifteen consorts. It's a tight and uncomfortable squeeze and the bull needs to enforce the peace. He also won't allow any other males to invade his turf. Within a week, territories are defined and the pregnant females prepare to give birth. One of the bull's concubines goes into labor. The contractions come quickly. She's in pain and the father of her pup takes no notice. She suffers through almost an hour of labor. The bull has no interest in her yet. His only concerns are the females in estrus. his first few breaths, and the newborn commands his mother's attention. Seven kilograms, and larger than most newborns, the perfect recipe for a seal that might attempt a journey such as the sardine run. But for the moment, his world centers on his mother. Their individual call, smell and touch develop the imprinting that will bond them for the next nine months. While mom rests, he finds his source of milk and figures out how it all works.
now that he's dealt with the priorities of a newborn, he can take a good look around. He's not the only newborn on the island. Within a month, all the pregnant females of the colony give birth to ensure that they will all mate again before the bulls leave. The scavengers keep the island clean. The beginning of summer is a busy time of year on the Cape's rocky islands. It's the seabird's breeding season too. They pair off, mate and tend to their eggs. At the gannet colony, mornings are particularly frantic. One of each of the chick's parents fights through a barrage of beaks to get to the runway. Their fast-growing hatchlings demand a fresh catch every day. Gull parents have it easier. They pick up whatever the tide washes onto the beach, although they're not too keen on sharing. Cormorants prefer to nest higher up on the rocks. The catch of the day is liquidized and regurgitated on demand. It's a young bird's treat. While the birds feed daily throughout their breeding season, the bulls and mothers go without food through theirs. Oblivious to his mother's fasting, the young pup is quite a handful. He has an adventurous nature. But his mother doesn't let him go far. He protests. A week into the pup's life and his father ambles towards him for the first time. 300 kilograms of pure strength, an icon for the pup to aspire to. But the bull doesn't even cast the pup a glance. His attention is focused on the pup's mother, now ripe for mating. Driven by instinct, she follows the bull and leaves her pup on his own. So small and vulnerable, yet already abandoned. But she must make the most of the bull's attention and mate before he leaves the island. This is probably the last time the pup will ever see him. The life of a newborn seal is no easy ride. By the end of December, the bull has fulfilled his only paternal duty, impregnating the females with his strong genes. For the next year, he will roam the ocean south of Africa, and perhaps he will follow the sardine run once more. Most of the adult females of the colony are now pregnant and need to feed. After two weeks of fasting, their fat reserves are depleted and the pup's only source of nourishment, his mother's milk, is running low. Following her is not an option. And if she doesn't return within the next five days, he will die of starvation. Abandoned first by his father and now by his mother, life is not looking good for the pup. His mother joins other females on an expedition to find food. But before they can hunt, they must run the gauntlet.
Once again, the cunning stealth of the great white shark is measured against the lightning reflexes of the seals. This time, the seals win. They spot the shark before it can make a move. Now the mother and her allies can look for food. They swim towards the mainland. Fifteen kilometers from the island, she finds a pocket of sardines trapped in the shallows. With agile moves, she picks them out one by one. On average, she would eat about four kilograms of these tiny fish, but this time, she needs to stock up her reserves and produce enough milk to stay on land with her pup for at least a week. This small school of sardines is just enough for a filling meal. Sardines thrive in these cool waters. Their habitat spreads over a 400 square kilometer underwater plateau that stretches south from Africa's shores. The ocean here is crammed with their favorite food, microscopic plankton, making conditions so perfect that these waters support billions of sardines, some of the largest breeding stocks in the world. And the secret to their success? Flood the waters with an oversupply of eggs, a vast majority of which do not hatch. But those that do develop quickly, and within four days they hatch into larvae. They're plankton size now, bottom of the food chain, and even eaten by their own kind. Over four months, they transform into fish-shaped juveniles that can swim and shoal. Four centimeter long fingerlings, no better off in the food chain than when they hatched. And even when they reach adult size, they'll still be pursued by larger predators. But to catch a sardine, the predator has to be as agile as the fish. Mammals that hunt in water require custom-built features to capture their prey. Seals can remain underwater for over 10 minutes by slowing their heart rate and storing oxygen in their blood rather than in their lungs. Their nostrils are naturally closed when relaxed and compressed even tighter by the water pressure. While catching food, no water is swallowed either, because throat muscles close the gullet. While the seal mother gorges on the sardines and rebuilds her fat reserves, back at the colony on Seal Island, her adventurous young pup has found a playmate. The two make a mischievous pair, innocent of the fact that the gull has a lethal beak that could inflict a serious injury. The bird is quickly forgotten and the two playmates romp and fight, already training for adulthood. By midday, most adults laze in the sun, or sky point, a comfortable pose, for a seal. And if adults do it, mm. lying down seems a much easier option. Two days alone, and the pup has played with his newfound friend and explored his surroundings. It doesn't seem too bad without mom.
By the third day, he starts to get hungry and explores the shore in search of something to eat. But kelp is no mother's milk. Maybe being home alone is actually not that much fun. So many females. Surely one of them could be mom. But not one of them smells right. And now he's desperately hungry. His calls for mom go unheard. Then he finds a source of milk from a female suckling her pup. And he tries to sneak in for a drink. But he's caught out. Mothers don't tolerate strange pups. This adventure is becoming dangerous. Then he wanders too close to another hostile mother. survive till his mother's return? More importantly, will his mother return? The fifth day starts with all the promises of summer and the safe return of the mother to Seal Island. But she has no way of knowing if her pup has survived. The shore looks like a killing field. She calls and waits for a reply. Then, a familiar cry. Mom is home, and her young pup passed his first survival challenge. Now, he doesn't let her out of his sight. With each mouthful of rich milk, he builds his strength. But a healthy body is not enough to survive to adulthood. He will need to become shrewd and agile to keep out of trouble and find his own food, all talents that he still has to develop. Six weeks into his existence, one of these life skills is put to the test. For his first swimming lesson, his mother chooses a particularly rough surf day. He can barely keep his head above water. But mom helps keep him afloat.
It's a tough lesson to learn, but vital for his progress. Eventually, he begins to get the hang of it. A last wave to help him ashore. And the lesson is over. From here on, he needs to perfect these skills and then perhaps take on a bull's most grueling test, the thousand kilometer journey of the sardine run. Only time will reveal his true colors. Seasons pass over the islands. Birds migrate for the winters and return here to roost in the summers. Each year, the bulls return to the colony to mate. And the mothers break their bonds with old pups and develop new ones with their newborns. Three years of changing Cape weather and dangerous seas have challenged the inhabitants of Seal Island. But through it all, the pup has grown into a strong and confident young seal. He dominates over his peers, showing all the signs of having inherited his father's supreme genes. And after asserting his superiority, it's time for a workout in the sea. These games quicken his reflexes and improve his speed and agility. Moves that will prove vital in avoiding the jaws of a great white. All skills needed for a fine-tuned hunting ability. Today's exercises take him past the Gannet colony. It's February and the fledglings are learning to fly. But perfecting the laws of aviation is no easy feat. The floundering gannets attract the young seal's attention. At this age, he's up for any game. A harmless game turns into a calculated killing. He only eats the soft belly and leaves the rest to the scavengers of the sea. Such a cruel act, and the young seal proves to be a serious contender in the passage to adulthood. Now he is ready to leave the colony for his life's adventures. But first, he must pass one more test, probably the most dangerous yet. Sneak past the great white sharks the ever-present menaces that patrol the channel next to the island. Patient, vigilant, and always hungry. The autumn winds blow in from the cold south. they alter the flow of the surface currents. And suddenly, the sharks turn their attention away from the seal colony 
their acute smell picks up a new scent coming from the open ocean, an irresistible odor to a shark. Rotting mammal meat, the carcass of a southern right whale. 60 tons of floating meat and blubber, enough to feed all the great whites in the area. When an easy meal like this comes along, they're first at the banquet. Despite the great white's extraordinary hunting ability, second only to the killer whale, they are not above scavenging. They all share the carving up of the whale. This will keep them busy for at least four days. For now, the siege of Seal Island is on pause. And seeing their chance to sneak past unnoticed, the young male and his peers make a dash for the open sea. Their escape coincides with the onset of winter, which brings one of the biggest changes of the year to the Cape of Storms. From the south, powerful weather fronts pound the land and rearrange the currents. A stream of cold water carrying a fresh supply of nutrients is pushed to the surface and up South Africa's eastern coast. Now the sardine's ideal habitat expands from Africa's southern tip, a thousand kilometers northeast, past the cliffs of the wild coast and all the way to Durban's subtropical shores. This is the winter countercurrent that lures two-year-old sardines to begin one of nature's most impressive marathons, a mass migration of millions upon millions of fish. But in their quest to reach these alluring feeding grounds, they leave behind a trail of body fluids, an invisible oil slick with a powerful smell. an appetizing aroma for those who find the sardines a trophy worth pursuing. Common dolphins and copper sharks pick up the slimy trail and leave the Cape waters to chase the sardines on their epic journey. The three-year-old seal smells this promise of a feast. But this journey into unknown waters might be beyond his means. And 500 kilometers from home, the seals attract the attention of a master killer, 
and it's not interested in the sardines. seal gets away with a minor scrape and takes refuge with his peers on the reef below. Another triumph over one of life's challenging tests. Now he keeps a low profile, but the longer he waits here, the greater the distance between him and the traveling sardines. Even gannets that left the Cape to follow the same silver shoals now overtake the seal. The cold current from the south guides the sardines further up South Africa's east coast. And 800 kilometers from their home waters, the underwater continental shelf narrows to six kilometers from the shores of the wild coast. This forces the cold current from the south closer to land. The sardines have no choice but to squeeze tighter together. Now the million strong schools form well-defined shoals and clear targets for the predators. This is where the sardines enter hostile territory. To keep alive, they must outrun their hunters. The common dolphins unite into a superpod. Thousands of them now move in formation, swimming as fast as 37 kilometers per hour. They scan the ocean with their powerful sonar. It's only a matter of time before they locate the sardines. Immediately, the little fish employ their best defense tactic form an enormous mass that constantly changes shape, size, and direction, designed to confuse and elude the attackers. But the dolphins are too smart for that. They separate a section of the huge shoal and round them up into a swirling mass called a bait ball. The dolphins let the rest of the mother load swim away. The small bait ball is now of a manageable size and easy to attack. By the time the dolphins have prepared the banquet, the copper sharks arrive to share the feast. It is believed that the sharks find the bait ball by listening to the dolphins' clicks and whistles. Disregarding their mammal counterparts, they plunge in immediately. Eventually, the relentless attackers drive the bait ball against the surface of the sea. Dolphins and sharks trap the sardines from below. And gannets attack from above. These birds can dive five meters deep, enough to make a calculated snatch of one sardine.
What started as an organized dolphin operation turns into a confused feeding frenzy. This bait ball is doomed to extinction. Eventually, all that is left is a gang of predators hungry for more. That was just enough to arouse their hunter lust. They resume their pursuit of the mother load of sardines. The dolphins take the lead. hundred kilometers behind them, the three-year-old missed the entire bait ball event while avoiding the great white's jaws. But he survived and is on the move again. If he swims fast enough, he'll catch up with the action. As winter intensifies, more storms blow in from the south. An inconvenience for the seals, they're not fond of heavy seas. But the seals' nightmare is the sardine's blessing. The weather fronts replenish the cool, nutrient-rich current, the fuel that drives the billion-strong migration further up the coast. Now the sardines must tighten their ranks some more as the countercurrent squeezes into an even thinner strip. Here, the tiny fish are forced through a crush bordered on one side by the cliffs that mark the northern boundary of the wild coast, and on the other side by the warm south-flowing Agullus current, too warm for the sardines to bear. This current brings new players into the fray. Bottlenose dolphins are larger and slower moving than their common cousins, but just as artful. Now the enormous schools of sardines are tracked down by two different sets of sonar. More heavies join the ranks of hunters, dusky sharks. The waters are getting crowded. Ten kilometers behind the gathering predators, the young seal and his peers are back on the trail of the sardines. He's now almost a thousand kilometers from home, but the excitement of the chase spurs him on. To pinpoint the action, he looks out for circling gannets. From the air, the bait ball organized by the dolphins is unmistakable. of sardines trapped behind invisible sonic walls emitted by the circling dolphins. Common and bottlenose dolphins work together. They alternate between patrolling the outer rim and plundering the loot. the sharks come in to feed. The smaller copper sharks dart quickly in and out of the bait ball. The larger and heavier dusky sharks make more calculated attacks and take larger mouthfuls.
And finally, the three-year-old seal, like his father, a pirate among the raiders. But while he's in the thick of it all, he cannot see the other predators approaching from the outside. And a three-meter dusky shark could easily snap him up for food. Now, more than ever, the young seal is playing with his life. Inevitably, the manic feeding rage produces a casualty. Below, the predators continue their relentless attack. This is a spectacular underwater assembly of predators united to decimate the ranks of the enormous bait ball. A brigade of a thousand dolphins, the masterminds behind it all. A battalion of over 200 sharks that take advantage of the dolphins' clever work. Mobbed from the air by hundreds of gannets. In between, tuners enjoy the rich pickings. And among the throng, a few brave seals, richly rewarded for their tenacity. For the hunters, there is no better feast, a unique feast that only occurs once a year, here in the waters of the wild coast. Five hours later, and the huge bait ball is reduced to a fraction of its original size. The dolphins give up their sonic siege, allowing the surviving sardines to escape. These join up with the tail end of the mother load that made it through the treacherous gauntlet of the wild coast, and they all dive into the depths offshore. It's now the beginning of summer, and the surface of the water, warmed by the African sun, becomes an unbearable bath for the sardines. From here, their movements puzzle scientists despite attempts to follow their course. The sardines are so small and the ocean is so vast that they are incredibly difficult to follow. The general consensus is that these fish stay in the depths off Durban and around November, they begin to migrate back towards the Cape. But this is all speculation, and their homebound voyage remains a mystery. And what of the three-year-old seal? Has he too gone astray into the immensity of the ocean? During his short life, he completed a dangerous mission, but now he needs to accomplish a more important voyage, the one to adulthood. For the next seven years, he will be a nomad, growing in size and strength, so that one day he can return to the colony as a full-sized bull. Only then will he be ready to start a lineage of his own. And in this world, breeding is the supreme purpose of nature. A plain yet effective concept when used in the context of tiny fish 
such as sardines. Too simple to outsmart their hunters, but so fertile that they outbreed them. And this is only one of their many mysterious secrets of survival in an ocean dominated by predators.